Hey, what's up everybody? Decided to make a quick how-to video on making a candy board, which I refer to as Winter's Insurance Policy. So, just to go over a few things, the materials you'll need is a 1x3x8. By by I bought this at Lowe's for $1.62. And then I have some panel nails, one and five inches, some metal cloth, which again from Lowe's, this roll, roll costs about $14 and it's 10 feet by two feet. And I've made three candy boards. Today I'll make one, so four. You can probably get five or six candy boards out of this. The tools you'll need, again, this is a very simple how-to video, uh, a jigsaw, something to measure with. I have a square. Uh, what else do we have here? Some corner clamps. Um, I will tell you right now this is not necessary. So the previous candy boards I made, I simply put them on the garage floor and butted each side into the square and had my wife help hold them for me. So if you're operating by yourself, these things are useful. I believe I paid maybe 20 bucks for them. I did not buy them for this reason, I bought these a few months ago when I made my swarm traps. And then a hammer, right? So the simplest way you can get your dimensions is by measuring one of your other B boxes, whether it's a deep, a medium, or a shallow, really doesn't matter, they're all the same dimensions. But to save some time and to speed the video up, the what I have labeled as the front and back sections, and how I know that is I put a, I believe that's, either a half inch, yeah I think that's a half inch hole um, entrance on the front of the candy board. So that's what I refer to the front and back as. They are 16 and a quarter inches wide and then the sides are 18 and three quarters. I'll put all the dimensions in the description. I'm not necessarily going to list the tools. I will list the materials so everybody has something to refer back to. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna cut the camera off, make my measurements, uh, cut the one by three by eight down to size, and then when we come back, I'll show you, well, I'm not even gonna do that really because honestly, there is absolutely nothing fancy with this. I just drilled some pilot holes and then simply nailed the front piece into the side piece. And that's pretty much it. And then with the the metal cloth, as you can see, I just cut that down to size and stapled it directly underneath. Some people, some of the videos I've seen on YouTube, which it's really not many, they've bent the candy board to where it's on the inside and it's an absolutely flush fit on whatever B-Box you have it resting on. I've discovered over the last few years by doing it like this by putting the metal cloth directly underneath it creates just a little bit of a gap which the bees you know if you put your candy board on with enough time your bees will fill that in with propolis nicely also it prevents a little ventilation in addition to the entrance hole and then i'll show you once i make the the hard candy how i place that in the candy board because there is a little a little bit of method to it which you'll see later on in the video. So I'm gonna cut the one by three by eight down to size, piece it together, and then show you the final product. Extremely easy, minimal tools required. Don't make it a complicated process. And the reason I describe the candy board as Winter's insurance policy is because it does two things. One, it supplies your bees with an emergency food source if they don't have enough food stores in the colony, in the hive boxes themselves. And two, because there's such low water content in the hard candy, which I'll show later, because there's such little water content, as winter goes on and the temperatures drop, the hive maintains about a 93, I think, to a 95 internal temperature, so you have a pretty drastic internal and external temperature difference so moisture is created and believe it or not moisture is one of the leading factors that will kill your hives over the winter so again because the hard candy has such little water content as the hive is staying warm and generating condensation the candy will actually absorb some of that 
condensation or moisture within your hive. Again, helping your bees survive the winter. All right, just got done making my cuts. And I would say, let's make sure it's on camera, that worked out pretty good. And then this one will go across the top there. So, same dimensions. Just gonna make a few pilot holes. I'll actually utilize these things here. Which, like I said earlier, I bought these to make my swarm traps because I was building them by myself. If you have an extra set of hands, I guess you don't necessarily need anything like this, but pretty good tool to have. So the longer sides are the left and right. The shorter side is the front and back. Let's get this situated how I want it. Whatever works best, I guess. So yeah, just square them up how you want. Lock the clamp down, of course. And here in a second, I'll show you. Kind of squares it up for you automatically, which is nice. And you don't have to mess around with a square or wonder if everything's squared up. Kind of just takes care of that for you. All right, there you go. Just kick the camera. Yeah, so you got your front, you got your side, just like uh, just like the previous build, just like that. The front goes over, you know, over the side, or however you want to describe it. Some people get fancy if they're big into woodworking. Uh, I'm definitely not very simple approach. So yeah, I'm just gonna make some pilot holes and hammer in these two nails and I'll do the same for all four sides and then show you the final product. All right, just finished with the last side. And there you go, basically just making a box. So what next, right? Well, the next step is to get the uh, wire cloth on the bottom and because I'm relatively OCD, uh, well, let me back up. A few tool, tools you'll need, just some snips and staple gun, nothing fancy. So, widthwise, with the wire cloth, you're going 32 squares across and then 39 squares deep. So, I'm just gonna measure that out and make those cuts off camera, not to bore you but I will put those specs in the video description as well. All right, there you go. One unpainted candy board. I'll paint that later. Uh, nothing really special about the paint. You just want a good exterior paint. The previous candy boards, I painted those maybe two years ago, one or two coats, and they've lasted just, just fine. You never have too many staples, more the better. And you can fit about 15 pounds of hard candy in here. So I'll be making that recipe here in a second. I'll include those details in the description as well. And then you'll see the final product here in a little bit. All right, for the final part of the candy board how-to video, we're gonna make some hard candy. So it's pretty simple. Each candy board will have 15 pounds of sugar, and then you need three cups of water and one tablespoon of vinegar. I have two 10-pound bags I used to measure everything out precisely, but for this video, as you'll see, I'm simply going to dump approximately half of the second bag into the bucket here. And the only reason I have all these individual 10 pound bags is because Walmart was sold out of the 25 pound bags. So for this reason, 
I bought the 10 pound bags. I was gonna say it does make it easier because you just have to use one and a half bags per candy board, so measuring out's a little easier. And I have four candy boards that I'm making hard candy for, so I bought six bags of six 10 pound bags of sugar. Therefore, I won't have anything left over. Otherwise, if they did have the 25 pound bags, I'd buy three and then ultimately have about 15 pounds of sugar left over, which I really don't need right now. So spent a little more money price uh, per ounce, I think is what they break it down to. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. So you'll see this is a, this is a rather simple process. So there's 10 pounds. And I will get the I'll get the second bag open, but for now I'm going to add the one tablespoon of vinegar to the water. And I heated this up on the stove just in a tea kettle for about two minutes or so right before it starts boiling. And I'm gonna add all three cups to the sugar right now, just so it mixes up nicely. And hopefully y'all can see this. So you can see that's a, that's a pretty nice slurry. And the only reason I did it this way is because if you add all 15 pounds of sugar at once, it just makes it a little, little more difficult to mix up. So approximately half, half of the second bag. Yeah, it seems, it seems pretty good. And then just mix that up. This is where it becomes a little difficult to mix. Just really just want to get it as good as possible. I'm gonna finish up mixing this up and then show you how I position the, uh, the hard candy here on the candy board. All right, here's the final step. So just get some regular old wax paper. I remember it taking about, yeah, we'll do two. Two pieces, just because it's not really wide enough. And it doubles up in the middle a little bit. And then, hopefully this is on camera. And then right in the front, where your entrance hole is, this is a uh, complete personal preference, but just cut a little square out. And then on the back side as well, in the corners, cut a square out as well. And the reason I do this is because it acts as ventilation and gives the bees easy access to get up into the candy board to access the candy. So here we go. There's our hard candy, that's what it looks like. And just like that, just start putting it on the candy board. It's still rather wet, which is fine.
because it'll allow us to uh, mold it. pounds of hard candy. Just kind of mold it however you want. Doesn't really matter as long as it's lower than the uh, candy board itself. So you'll put this on top of whatever top brood chamber you have and then the inner cover goes on top of this and then the external cover, outer cover. All right, that's how you make a, a candy board and your hard candy. So I'll put all the dimensions in the video description to include the recipe for the hard candy, but it's as simple as that. Again, this serves two purposes. It acts as an insurance policy for your bees, gives them an emergency source of food in case they don't have enough stores and absorbs some of the hives moisture over the course of winter. So hey, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to receive notifications for additional videos. Leave your comments below if you have any suggestions or questions and I'll, I'll try to answer them. So thanks for watching. Coles Farm, Jacksonville, North Carolina.